Hello friends, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, whichever time zone you are viewing from. Welcome again to our YouTube channel, EdTech Society All Learners. Following numerous requests, we have uploaded a sample practitioner question and a strategy for tackling it. Today, we are excited to present one more sample question complete with a systematic approach to mastering the practitioner question on your exams. So let's dive into the nature of the practitioner question. As we have already explained, unlike the standard certification exam, the feature that feature brief objective type questions with four options. The practitioner section presents a comprehensive scenario brimming with details. Some of this information is crucial for finding the correct answer, while other parts serve as a distractor mean to be disregarded or ignored, we can say. The four answer choices can be deceptive. Among them, you will find one non-scoring distractor and three progressively correct options like one pointer, three pointer and five pointer. So your task is to shift through these choices, eliminating the non-scoring and partially scoring option to pinpoint the most accurate answer. Before we tackle the question, here's a quick rundown of tips for your quick glimpse, which we will anyway elaborate again during our in-depth session in our upcoming videos. But for your reference, the four quick pointers, aim to complete each question within 10 minutes. We'll also try to demonstrate this timing in our video as well. Point number two, expect to encounter at least two to three paragraphs per question. Remember, there is no one size fits for all approach to reading order or determining the significance of section. It varies from question to questions. Sometimes the key uh, word or uh, the key insights might emerge right from the first, very first line or very first paragraph. Point number three, Focus on identifying the keywords and the insights within the questions. And point number four is avoid approaching the question with a mindset limited to our daily IT project activities or from a small project level solution architecture mindset. Because we all deal with those kind of a IT projects and uh, solution perspective. Instead, adopt a broader perspective, considering enterprise architecture and the overarching portfolio level. We will anyway share additional insights drawn from our real life experience and uh, during our preparation journey. Now, without further delay, let's get started with the question. So here is a sample question we are trying to discuss. First, I'll read it out, the questions uh, from top to bottom. Then we'll try to discuss and identify the keywords and what actually uh, we are trying getting, we are understanding and finally the insights and then try to map each of the options in the answers and find out which one suits best to the question and finally mark the correct answer. So let's read it out. You are serving as a lead architect for an enterprise architecture team within a leading multinational pharmaceutical company. The company primarily works in healthcare industry. Your team works within the new drug or vaccine production unit. So this is just talking about uh, the whereabouts of the EA team and uh, pharmaceutical company, the vaccine and all that part. So I'll do one thing here. I'll just uh, add a pointer option, uh, highlighter in case we want to highlight any of the keywords or the insights we are getting from the questions, which will be beneficial to determine the correct answer. 
Now the second paragraph. The company is developing a new drug or vaccine and has to demonstrate its effectiveness and safety in a set of clinical trials that satisfy the regulatory requirement. So it's talking about the clinical trials and the regulatory requirements. Now the clinical trials are undertaken by its research laboratories at multiple facilities worldwide. So it's a worldwide organization, a multi-geography organization. In addition to internal research and development activities, the healthcare division is also involved in publicly funded collaborative research projects with industrial and academic partners. Okay, uh, there are a lot of informations are given, uh, but honestly don't see any uh, key terminology or insight. So far, it's just a basic description of the EA team, what exactly they're involved with the organization level. Now, the enterprise architecture team has been engaged in an architecture project to develop the secure system. That will allow the healthcare researcher to share information more easily about their clinical trial. So it's talking about sharing information in the clinical trials and work more collaboratively across the organization and also with its partners. The system will also connect with external partners. Okay, fine. So it's talking about a secure system uh, to design uh, so that they can share information and work collaboratively with different partners, fine enough. Now the fourth paragraph, the enterprise architecture team uses the TOGAF ADM with extensions required to support healthcare manufacturing practices and laboratory practices, okay? Due to the highly sensitive nature of the information that is managed, uh, that is managed special care has been taken to ensure that each architecture domain considers the security and privacy issues that are relevant. Okay, so now it's talking about the security and privacy issues. So obviously this security and privacy can be uh, important aspects of the overall question. Okay, the vice president for worldwide clinical research is the sponsor of the enterprise architecture activity. She has stated that disruptions must be minimized for the clinical trials. Okay, so this is seems to be sorry, a disruption must be minimized. And then she's also asked, asking that that rollout must be undertaken incrementally. Okay, so it's more of a incremental approach should be taken. Okay, this is a very important thing. We believe that might be crucial for our answer. You have been asked to recommend the approach to identify the work packages. Okay, work packages. So that means uh, it's talking about the work packages uh, identifying for an incremental rollout meeting the requirements, okay? So, and based on the TOGAP standard, which of the following is the best answer? So, if we just try to quickly summarize, the EA team, they are uh, working in a healthcare industry, creating or building a new drug, vaccine, and that for that they are going for clinical trials. So, it's very important that uh, the share sharing this information because it's a sensitive, in nature, so security and privacy is is one of the key thing that can be a one important point. Then the main ask, at least what I think at this moment, that that uh, the sponsor or the VP of that uh, research facility has asked that minimized uh, minimization of the disruption of the clinical trial and the rollout must be undertaken incrementally, and the work packages. Uh, for the incremental rollout, uh, identifying the work package. So as we know, uh, if you have uh, gone through the uh, TOGAF uh, article and our videos also will be uh, discussing there, if it is about that work packages, identification of work package and all those, it will be phase E opportunity and solution or around uh, for phase A where migration and planning to be discussed. So it could be very well at uh, talking about phase E and F, where it's talking about these particular points. Now, let's uh, 
dive into the options. Option A, you recommend that a solution building blocks form from a consolidated gaps, solutions and dependency matrix be grouped into a set of work packages. Okay, so solution building blocks uh, to be built with a dependency matrix. Okay, fine. Using the matrix as a planning tool, regroup the work packages to account for dependencies. Sequence the work packages into the capability increments needed to act achieve the target architecture good enough so that the implementation team can schedule the rollout one region at a time to minimize disruption okay very good at least seems to me because it's talking about the ro incremental rollout uh, by minimize the disruption all these uh, pointers and so I believe this is one of the most important uh, statement in this particular options, along with it's talking about phase A for talking about the solution block, building blocks, and then uh, the matrix uh, to be created and the sequence of work packages. Uh, these are all phase if migration planning uh, activities normally uh, are performed and then the document of the document the work packages for the enterprise architecture using a transition architecture state evolution table okay this is again phase a and seems to be a one of the possible valid answer okay let's uh check the option b if it is better or uh i would say not maybe a destructor we don't know let's uh go through it you recommend that set of required solution building blocks be determined by identifying those which need to be developed and which need to be procured okay so it's talking about the solution building blocks again then fine eliminate any duplicates okay group the remaining solution building blocks together to create the work packages using uh, the crude uh, matrix create read update and delete rank the work packages and select the most cost effective option for inclusion in a series of transition architectures schedule the rollout of the work packages to be sequential across the geographic region okay so it's talking about a uh, rollout in a sequential manner but it did not uh, consider about the minimization of the disruption or an incremental rollout. It's more of a sequential uh, implementation it talk about. So it is a good option. Uh, also talking about the, some uh, matrix uh, and a technique uh, which is normally performed in phase E, uh, opportunity and solution. Uh, but it seems to me compared to option A, compared uh, compared to option A, B is not that great, honestly. But still, it uh, holds uh, good, uh, I would say, from, but it may not be a distractor. Okay, so option C, you recommend that an implementation factor catalog is drawn up to indicate actions and constraints. Okay, so implementation factor catalog is again one of the technique in uh, phase if uh, E and F around that uh, phases. So it's talking about that. Our consolidated gaps, solution and dependency matrix should also be created. Okay, so it's talking about uh, this particular matrix. For each gap, identify a proposed solution and classify it as a new development purchase solution or based on an existing product. Group similar activities together to form work packages. Identify dependencies between work packages factoring in the clinical trial schedules. Regroup the work packages into a set of capability increments scheduled into a series of transition architecture. Okay, uh, so this is talking about a lot of uh, tasks or activities which normally being done or performed during phase E and F. Uh, talking about the work packages, uh, clinical trial schedules and all, but it did not uh, explicitly mention about the disruption 
uh, minimizing the disruption and how the rollout will actually be performed. So I would say till now A is the best, uh, B is a kind of a okay a kind of option, C is not that great honestly. So from that uh, particular sequence or order. Okay, La the last but not the least, uh, option D, you recommend that a consolidated gaps solution and dependency matrix is used as a planning tool for creating work packages. For each gap, classify whether the solution is either a new development, purchase solution, or based on an existing product. Group the similar solution together to define the work packages, okay? Regroup the work packages into a set of capability increments to transition into the target architecture, considering the schedule for clinical trials and document in an architecture definition incremental table. So again, it's talking about uh, this particular matrix. It is again phase E and A, fine. It's talking about the gaps, uh, then consolidating the gaps uh, and the solution eventually into work packages. This is also okay. Uh, then uh, capability increments in the transition to the target architecture talking about. And finally, it's talking about that architecture definition incremental table that is also a technique in phase ENF. So if you can see all these four options are talking about different kind of techniques which are being performed in phase E and F and primarily phase F. Now, if we just quickly uh, go back to the original question where we're talking about the rollout part is the main ask or primary ask from the VP that that disruption should be minimized for the clinical trials and rollout must be undertaken incremental and of the work packages. And so definitely it should be phase E and F and all these four options are aligned with that. But if as we have discussed, the option A is most aligned because it is talking about different techniques along with that it is talking about the minimizing the disruption and the incremental rollout. So, so I believe the option A is the best answer and should be the choice for the applicant in the exam. So yes, the option A is the best answer and this is the five pointer uh, for this particular question. So this is how we should uh, try to go through the question and answer, uh, identify the keywords and try to align the answer with the key ask or the primary ask and finally with all the keywords if it is matching or not and then identify the best possible answer which should be the five pointer and in this scenario the option a is the best answer so that's how we should try to solve the practitioner questions okay friends uh that's all for today's session and we'll come back with numerous videos and uh sample questions to discuss with you so please stay tuned and subscribe to our channel a tech society all learners thank you and have a good day